Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. So welcome to the show. Today is Thursday and I have with me Kinji Santil and he is going to be talk. We are going to be talking about creating a new lifestyle for 2024 because it's not long. I'm your host, Karen Roberts, helping coaches and therapists to get their message heard to the people who need to hear it. Now, Kenji has been in the fitness industry for 30 plus years. I only made it to 25. So you're <laughs> already ahead of me there, Kenji. But also, he was in the military for nine years. In it, three branches so he doesn't just do one thing which is really shown with what he does he offers online coaching and it incorporates not just fitness but it also a bit of yoga and hypnosis so he really is covering all bases so welcome to the show Kinji thank you nice Nice to see every, every, well, can't see everyone, but (laughs) I have (laughs) years. Depends where they are, depends where they're. They might see this on YouTube, but if they're listening, it's all good. It's all good. So first of all, before we get started, really talking about how people can sort their lifestyle out, getting ready for 2024, what inspired you to be doing what you're currently doing? Wow. So I love sharing this story, Karen. I had the most wonderful person in my life, which was like my grandmother. She raised me and growing up, I used to see how she used to have to take medications and take many pills. And I remember as a kid, she would, whenever I would get a headache, she would crush the pill up and put a little bit of sugar in order for me to swallow it because I just couldn't do it. And still, even still to this day, when it comes to supplements, I can't. So I knew when I got older, I knew that there was an issue within the Western medicine. So I wanted to be able to not get older and have to be relying on all these medications. So for me, I went on that journey of trying to become as healthy as possible for as long as I could. I I totally agree with you there. It's frightening, I think, if I'm. I don't know. So over here, or maybe I shouldn't m- mention names, but a, m- a well-known shop that's that's primarily looked at as a chemist. You might be purchasing your stuff. You might be in the queue. And I would say anybody, even my age, I'm, I'm only 51, but anybody 50 plus seems, it, I know there, there's no stats here, but it just looks to me that so many people are on so many tablets and you just think that could all be dealt with because we just live in a conditioned society where we give our power away to somebody in a white coat telling us what to take. Whereas there are so many other ways (laughs) of, of, of staying healthy, right? So that was your sort of, that. that's what sparked your curiosity. But, okay, then what happened? Why did you combine it with hypnotherapy? Where did that come from? I can understand you wanting to understand about health and wellness, your fitness, your nutrition, but you don't often, or I don't often see somebody that's actually combined the hypnotherapy. To me, it's just a perfect fit. I agree. Only only because I know what I know now not when I was in the fitness industry. So what inspired you to do that? So I honestly always had this philosophy of if you don't, your body, you have to control your mind before you can control your body. And unfortunately, society puts, paints all these images and, oh, do this. And that's why, unfortunately, we can't stick to the program because we have to get to the root of the problem and it starts here and believe it or not it goes deeper because you may have a lot of trauma there let's say you were a kid that was bullied in school and someone always said that you were fat or let's just say in my case 
I was considered the skinny kid. So even family always teased me. They used to call me JJ, which was this character on this show called Good Times here in, in the United States. And so he was a skinny kid with bones and everything. So as I got older, then when I had got abs, it was a little bit different. But you still feel like this self-consciousness. So for a while, my 20s, it was like, get big. I got to get bigger no matter what. So I would take all these supplements, things that I didn't even know what I was putting into my body until I started doing my research. But it was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this because... It was marketing. I see this guy, he's going to be big. So I try to do everything possible supplement wise because I was not going the steroid way. That just wasn't going to happen because I've always been the whole natural. So I knew it was like, okay, I got to figure this out. I had to reprogram my mind and realize, you know what? My body's only going to get so big. I have to be comfortable with myself and allow myself to, to, just get to the goal that I'm trying to get to. And once I get to that goal, then I'm fine. And I'm comfortable with who I am today. And that's what we have to address to people. Be comfortable with who you are. Get out your comfort zone. Because that's the, the first step is to get out your comfort zone. Mm. What you said just there about the, the problem is, is the marketing. And these days it's even worse because these youngsters are anybody's like my daughter she doesn't even watch telly she's constantly on tiktok and, and they've got all these unrealistic images of yep. women that that is making them feel like they're not worthy they're not the oh, i'm ne i'm the opposite at kinji i'm never going to be skinny never going to happen it's not my natural shape so yep. i have to make the best with what i've got absolutely uh, I don't want to look unhealthy, so I'm not all about just trying to just lose weight. I don't have to lift much to just, my muscles just explode. That's just my natural body shape, and I just have to make the most of it. I'm never yeah. going to look like these models that are all very slim and all, I'm a bit sturdier. But you're right, you've got to be happy Absolutely. with what you have. But do you see that is a massive problem these days because of, what you said, marketing, one thing, and then the social media. Yes, it's a huge problem. And what I like to tell clients all the time is it's not about, especially with guys, I'm, I'm going to just say it what it is. We have egos. <laughs> and we think that just getting the six bag is the answer. And it's okay. It looks good. Great. But that's not the answer because I know people that have six packs that internally have so many issues that are sick. And I know people that don't have six packs. If you, if they were to go to the doctor, show you their results, they're fantastic and healthy condition. And so we have this misconception of what we see is what we're supposed to be. And there was a guy, matter of fact, in the army, when I was in the army, he was a heavy set guy. And a lot of guys would make fun of him. And I'm like, be careful. So whenever it came to running, that guy was smoked. All those guys. <laughs> and they're like, man, this guy's so big. I can't believe he beat me. And I'm like, see? <laughs> there you go. We've all got our strength and we've all got our weaknesses. And you know, let's just let's just focus on the strengths. Absolutely. So for people create for, for them to create uh, a healthy lifestyle, that's what we're we're going for in 2024 how do you do this with your clients do you have some kind of specific process that you work with them yes i do so the first thing we have to do is we have to change the habits because obviously that's gotten you to the place where you are so the first thing is mentally what i recommend is going into 2024 for example Go into it with the mindset of this is a lifestyle change. This is not a seasonal thing. And a lot of us hit new, oh, New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm going to start. It's not going to, I'm going to be honest. It's not going to work if you go in with that mindset. If you go in with the mindset of, oh, I want to look good for the summer or, oh, my sister's getting married. You have to go in a mindset, hey, this is a lifestyle. That's the first thing. Second thing I will say is consistency is everything. 
nothing's going to happen overnight. It's going to take some work. But as long as you're consistent, you will see changes. But again, going back to what you were talking earlier about why you even entered this realm, because you didn't, you didn't want to get older and have to rely on but people in white coats. Let's be careful what we say here. But because that's happened over the last however many years that we we don't trust our own intuition and trust that we actually know our bodies better than anybody else does. Do you think that's the issue? Again, we're all going for it's just instant gratification. I can go to a doctor and they give, give me a pill for that and that fixes that problem. So I want to just go to the gym and change the shape of my body in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> is that the real issue is everybody's got unrealistic expectation? Abs absolutely. You have to set small goals before you can get the big goals. So if you're, if you're just thinking you're going to get a six pack in four weeks, you're going to be disappointed. So you have to say, okay, look, I'm going to, I'm going to lose five pounds this month. And you probably end up losing 10 pounds, which is good. So that means it's more than your goal. And that's going to, that's going to keep you more accurate because what happens is let's say you say, oh, I want to lose 30 pounds in a month and then it doesn't happen. You're like, oh, this is not working. I'm just going to quit. So your mind is already boom, defeated. So you have to set goals that are realistic in order for you to um, meet your goals. But again, consistency is everything. You have to be consistent. So I always say this, treat your body like you would treat your job because there's days that you don't feel like going to work. So those that do work, though, even as an entrepreneur, there's days that I don't feel like doing content. I don't feel like doing research, but you need to do it because you have to teach your family and you, or whatever the business needs to scale or work. You have to do it for work because your boss is on you. Treat your body like that. There's going to be times... I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like working out. Think of it as work because I guarantee if your boss said you need to come in for these two hours, you're going to do it. <laughs> so do the same thing. But that, that is key, I would say, is the fact that when you go to work, you don't have a choice in the matter. You are being held accountable because you want to get paid. Uh, and I suppose this even relates to people starting their own business. I think that's why some people struggle in the beginning because they don't have that accountability. Even though they have this desire, goal of growing something, they don't have someone on their back. They, when you have a job, you don't question anything. You just get the job done so that you get paid. Absolutely. Whereas when it's just you and you're just going to tell yourself you're going to go to the gym, I think that's why so many people don't do so well, which is why they need a coach yes. for that accountability. Absolutely. And it works both ways. When I gave up teaching after 25 years and went online, you would have thought that I would have continued. And I didn't. And, I re and it was very humbling because I realized I had lost my clients, my participants were my accountability. I had to be at that club at that time and that club at that time. I never questioned it. All of a sudden, for the first time in a quarter of a century, I didn't have that accountability. And I gained weight. I got out of shape. It was a real, it was a struggle. And I really feel that is the thing. Everybody, I think, needs a coach. Absolutely. Because... You know, you were my coach and I had to turn up at a certain time to do my work. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And I would say even with that, when you are looking for a coach, you want to be able to find someone that you're connected with. Don't just walk into a gym and say, okay, here, they're going to sign me a coach. You, you need to find someone that you're comfortable with because not all coaches are going to be compatible with that person. And, and not all, and unfortunately not all coaches are going to have the best interests for, for you as well. Because what I found over the years, even teaching other um, trainers, 
and they would come to me and say, man, I don't understand. Like you, you gave me 10 clients and now I only have one. And I had to evaluate and, and ask them a few questions and say, okay, what do you think you did wrong? And they're like, I don't know. And I said, you want me to tell you? And they're like, yes. I said, you didn't listen to your clients. I said, you have to listen. Even though they're your clients, you have to listen. You can't, you're not their body. You can't do what you want to do for every client. You have to listen to your client. So if your client says, hey, I just, I can't do 300 pound squats because my knee, like you have to listen. And that's the key thing with finding a coach. So you have to find someone that you are really connected to and that's going to really listen to you and have the best interests for you. Right, because then you've got to have that trust, haven't you? Because, you know, what do you think holds people back from achieving the goals that they set themselves if they're, when they're doing this by themselves, if they don't have a coach, somebody to guide them through and to hold them accountable? They're too comfortable. It's always easy to stay in a comfort zone that you're used to because we can always make excuses. It's just like going back to high school and say, there's a class you didn't like and you're like, all right, I'll do homework tomorrow, i study. You know you're not gonna, you're not gonna do it. It's just one of those things. Or you're gonna be like me where I used to wait to the last minute to do my papers <laughs> and then I'm cramming the night before stressed out. Yes. <laughs> trying to get them done. It's just one of those things because it's comfort zone. And that's what usually keeps people in that shell. So that's why we have to change those habits. And it, you're right. It all starts there. So with your process, how you work with people. So you say you start with a mindset initially. So you do some hypnosis with them initially to get them started? I do. That's one of the first things that I do because we, because even with that, you'll find people are going to be resistant because they think hypnosis is, woo, I'm taking over your mind. <laughs> so you have to even get them to get comfortable with that. And then once they realize that they're comfortable with that, then it makes it a lot easier for them to listen to the other suggestions that you're going to do when it comes to wellness. And I would still call it a bit woo, hypnosis, but only <laughs> because people don't understand. I just see it as a don't like the word cheat because there's a negative connotation to it but it's a shortcut I see it as a shortcut why because I know look I know myself when I have I don't know like when I did put on weight during lockdown say and then trying to lose it again because I hit that self-sabotage button then and I'm an emotional eater but I would think that using your willpower by itself I've got a theory about this I correct me if I'm, I'm not saying it's right but in my head there's we all know it takes time to create a new habit right Absolutely. and I would say and, and many people might say three weeks or whatever it is the problem being I would say for me my willpower has a two-week limit <laughs> Which means there's a gap. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, then it's, yeah, but hypnosis and really focusing on that to bypass that, you got the shortcut there to change that old programming so that you do keep being, you said earlier about it, the importance of being consistent. Is that sort of how... <laughs> that's why you're it's, so it's really a bit of a cheap thing here i think Shinji. this is why your clients are getting so much success because you're, <laughs> you're combining the two so you've got an advantage over your company yes absolutely and believe it or not hypnosis is self-hypnosis so it's not like i'm you're always in control so it's actually you're you are the person that's actually doing the work it may seem like i'm actually doing the work but you're actually doing the work where it's like, I need to be like the Matrix, where they just, if I could just download, <laughs> just download all your junk, all the bad stuff, upload a new programming. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah. Life might be a bit boring. If you did it. <laughs> I wish I had that power too, because I would take every Bruce Lee and martial artist and just program it into my head. I know you combine, so it's not just fitness, it's not just weights and cardio, but you, and again, I like, really like this, combining it with yoga as well. For, for some people, this is what I used to see a lot, they just wanted to go in and do the hardcore stuff. They want to do hit classes. They want to do pump or they want to do weight. And they would look at yoga as a, oh, that's easy. I haven't got time for that. Passive. Yeah. Why is it so important to have that balance and to combine those things? Oh, man. You hit it right on the money. So I was, I'll be honest. I was one of those guys back in the day because I was all like boot camp, military. Let's go. And you realize that really doesn't work for everyone. And then also as you get older, because um, we're the same age practically, I'm 49, so I'll be 50 in January. And you start realizing, hey, I need to, things hurt. I need to work on flexibility. I need to work on breathing. And breathing is, is a key. Even if you're a boxer, if you're doing hit, or if you're a martial artist like myself, Breathing is important, and I, I, that's one thing I love about yoga because the flexibility and you're learning the breathing as well. Mm. So many people are not breathing correctly because some of the listeners might have thought, what's he talking about? Of course I'm breathing because I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm breathing. But there's breathing, and yes. then there's breathing. Breathing, yep. Breathing from the diaphragm. Because you'd be surprised, I see it all the time, where at the gym, someone is on a, either a cardio machine of some sort, and then they're either just trying to hold their breath or they're not breathing right. And I'm just counting down. I'm like, five, four, three, two, boom. And then they're, they're, all right. Yeah. Or they, they get off and they get dizzy and I see it all the time. So you, so breathing, it may sound silly, but breathing is an important factor. Correctly. Breathing correctly. I don't, I still to this day, I do not do cardio. Sorry. I do, sorry. <laughs> I do not do cardio. I'll do it. Maybe if it is in a bit of a hit class, I'm no, I want to, again, I'm getting older. I don't need yes. the cardio. I need the weights. I need to maintain my muscle mass. Well, even, with, yeah. Tell your story, go on. Even with that, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm like you. So I'm not one of those guys that are like, I'm just going to get on the treadmill for an hour and then I'm going to go do my weights. Let me explain this to people. Okay. Don't get caught up in the cardio game where, oh, I need to get on the Stairmaster for an hour. You can incorporate cardio within weight training. For example, what I do is particular days that I do want that cardio in, I would do more of you guys consider it like a circuit. Let's say if I'm doing a chest, I may do bench press and then in between I'll do some jumping jacks and then I'll go back to maybe chest press again, or I may do bench press, jumping jacks, do some dumbbell curls, and then do some abs without a break. So I'm just doing everything straightforward without a break and then maybe rest for about a minute and then hit it again. Yeah, I'm with you there. It's the best. I just couldn't think of anything more boring. When I go past them all on those, all the machine, I don't like any of the machines anyway. I just think, oh, come on, be I, a little bit more functional with, with your work. And I, I know for me as well, I used to teach a sort of, I'm not a yoga certified, but I taught body balance, which was a sort of combo of yoga, Pilates, a bit of Tai Chi at the beginning. And yeah, to this day, I think, oh, I gave that class up. That's where I went wrong because I was doing too much. It wasn't the balance. Yes. I was doing too much of the hard stuff. And I was like, oh. Yes. I'm exhausted, man. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Plus, we don't have a thing called the sun in the UK. <laughs> we, we don't see it that often, right? So actually, for me, it was my vitamin D was totally on the floor. And you'd think I would have known that. But 
I hadn't given it a thought. So I'd been living in Portugal in the Algarve for eight years, moved back to London. Just didn't give it a thought, the switch. Oh, no wow. sunshine, no vitamin D. I just thought I was just, oh man, I'm too old for this. I'm yeah. this. <laughs> and, and, uh, and done. But it just goes to show, again, the importance of having the balance. They Absolutely. are all just as important as each other and bringing it in together. So you really are covering all areas. You're the fitness side. Do you cover nutrition as well? I do. I do. Nutrition is a big, is a, is a huge factor. And let me stress on that too, because here's the other thing out there that people will see on TikTok and all these other platforms. Oh my God, I have to calculate my micros and people do not make it overcomplicated. Because here's the thing, in reality, you're going to go out to eat, you're going to go on vacation, and the last thing you want to do is not have a good time. And let's just be real. Who is going to count all that when they're in Hawaii, enjoying the beautiful sun and all that? Not going to happen. Eat clean. That's my recommendation. Eat clean, eat moderate, and stick to that. And you will be fine. Don't get caught up in, oh, I have to count and do all this because it's not going to work. Now, with that said, if you're trying to do a competition, get on stage, okay, that's a different story. But if you're just creating a lifestyle, don't get caught up in it because it's going to overcomplicate things and then you're just not going to stick with the program. There you go. We, us humans, do have a tendency to overcomplicate things a lot, don't we? Yeah. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. <laughs> Man, I have to I say that to myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, have to, yes. I have to remind myself of that one. <laughs> yes. Yes. And stay off the scale too. Don't check the scale every five minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because you can, could just be you're holding on to water or, yeah, it's just, or poop. It's, it's not given a, a, a real reading, is it? No. And you yeah. get. I'll admit I have done. <laughs> so for people wanting to create this healthy lifestyle for 2024, what would be your three top tips? Ooh, three top tips. I'm going to go back and again and say, one, get out your com comfort zone. Two, develop new habits. And three, be consistent. Oh, you make it sound so simple and isn't that the thing because it, it actually is that simple yeah as i just said we overcomplicate it all and isn't it funny that it's almost like people do want to jump on the latest trend or the latest gadget and you look at it and you think you could do exactly the same just oh. by doing that yes. as you were makes no difference but why do you think that is? Why are we, it's almost like we are all chasing these shiny objects and I'm looking for the fastest way to get to, I'm looking for this magic pill that is never going to extinct. Why do you think we do this? Because we want validation. That's the honest truth. We want validation from other people. It's just if you are in a Lamborghini, you want the validation of feeling good because people think either you're a celebrity or you have status, money, or if you're a guy, maybe you're trying to attract a lady or whatever. So it's validation. It's crazy. Aren't we funny? We're funny creatures, aren't we? <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> and I was There really is no need for it all. You no, know, so true. It's so true. And I would add another one, a fourth one. I would say be open for change. Be open to change. Don't just say, I want to change. Actually be open to change and take action. What would be your process then with, I know you do online coaching. Can you share with the listeners a little, about, little bit about how you work with people? And is it, do you work with them just ongoing? Do you have a three-month program, six-month? How do you work and how does your process actually help your clients okay so uh, i do i have a three-month program minimum 
and then six months and then a year program as well. Sounds like my stomach was growling. <laughs> Hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> Telling me time to eat. Yeah. Uh, so but it's early for you, isn't it? It's early for you over there, isn't it? It is. It is. That's why I still have these little bags on the mind. <laughs> So good. You've got the sunshine, don't shush. <laughs> but yes, I have a three month, three month, six month, and twelve month. Now, what I highly recommend is definitely start off with the six month because that's going to be the best fit for you because that's going to help you not only develop those habits for those six months, but it's also going to get you to the goals that you're looking to get. Now, three months is cool if later down the line you want a little maintenance program or let's say you're trying to get on stage and you want to compete and do a, a show or something like that, then I would say, okay, let's do a three month. If you're really overweight or just never started a fitness program, then I would definitely recommend a 12 month program. Because it, it takes time. It's funny that three month period. I don't know. There's something magical about 90 days and you can do a lot in 90 days for anything. The same with the mind, the same with the body, the same with business. If you were that consistent for 90 days, you would have to see change. Have yes. to. I'll challenge anybody. If you would do it, if you were actually being consistent and doing those things, there's no way you're not going to see change over a 90 day period. Where does this come from, this three-month thing? Because it is what it is. It is what it is. Do you know if there's any real reason behind that? <laughs> I think just subconsciously, we just have it in our head three three months or so you get so many. Oh, do the eight-week challenge. And it's funny. So last year, which this, I did something that I never, ever did because I just wanted to prove a point. So I did this challenge for my, just for myself, just to prove a point to people. I let myself go for two, two and a half, about two and a half, three months, not super crazy, but just didn't really work out. Just let myself go a little bit. So I was like, I want, I want to try something in 30 days. And I took the before pictures and then in 30 days, I wanted to show people like, look how much you can change. And all that stuff, I got back to where I was within 30 days. And some people may wonder, oh, he was in the gym for hours. No, I did five exercises every day. That's it. Five exercises every day. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to spend all these hours in the gym. I just did five exercises every day for about an hour. And that got me to back to where I'm at. And I can share those pictures later if you like, but. Way. But there you go. <laughs> so you weren't on the Stairmaster or the. Exactly. Oh my goodness. You weren't wasting your no. time and all these machines. I just. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was, everything was at home. So uh, let me make that point too. Everything was at home. I didn't go, even go to the gym. So I do have equipment at home, but it wasn't fancy equipment. I have like some kettlebells that I've used and, and then a lot of it was body weight as well. So it wasn't really, I went to the gym and I had all these machines cause didn't need it. I, I, do you know what I admire? I just have so much admiration for people who can do that again. I really, I have, I'm looking at it. I'm actually looking at my fitness equipment. I've even got a chin up on <laughs> and I don't use none of it. I have to still go to the gym. Again, it's something about, see, I obviously need work on. It's that accountability. And I still do prefer to go in and do a class. Cause again, I think it's, I feel like I'm going to be pushed more. If I'm going to the gym by myself, I might take too long in between sets. And then think, oh, somebody's on that. I want to use the squat rack, but there is one free, so I'll skip it and, and make excuses. I don't know where it comes from. You'd think that I would be so on the ball with it because I spent so long in the industry. But I, I realized that I'm just as bad as any of my brief. <laughs> <laughs> no. So what you have to do with that is you have to make, you have to make that area comfortable. So it's just like when you do your coaching. If you were to have all this stuff all scattered over your desk, it's going to make it uncomfortable for you to do your presentations. 
So you have to make that environment comfortable for you, which for me, I put my music on, I, I have it as the bat cave and I just get in my zone. And that's what helps me stay focused because it's comfortable. Everything is just organized the way I want. So boom, I can grab this, I can grab that. And I'm in my zone. I got my little refrigerator here. So if I need to grab some water, everything's there. So that way I'm not like going into the house and, oh, there's TV. It's just everything <laughs> is there. Boom. And I can knock it out. And even with the gym, sometimes I just want to be around people, even though I may not talk to people at the gym, but you just want that presence. So sometimes I will do that. What I also recommend is finding something fun to do. For me, I also do these um, workouts on the terrain. So what I mean is I may go hiking and then I'll go up in the mountains and all of a sudden, like I'm picking up big old boulders and doing workouts with them or like I'm doing these push-ups on these big old rocks and then doing lunges with boulders and doing show wow. and things like that. So I'm making it fun doing my workouts on the terrain. I makes yeah. it a bit different. And yeah, there's something, definitely something about working outdoors is just going to be so much Absolutely. better for you. And then of course you've got your yoga as well. So then you can yep. focus on Zoom. your breathing. <laughs> a bit of meditation at the end, even though half my class would get up and leave at the meditation, you'd think, no. Actually, you're the ones that need it more. Get back down. I, I didn't say that to them. But you know, that's what would go through my head. I think, no, you're missing out. Possibly, I don't want to put it in priority, but it, it really is an important part of the process and having that balance. So, yeah, you can go hard when you need to go hard, but also Absolutely. you need that calm. And that will help even with the self-hypnosis as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Definitely. And I will also say this, because I'm going to say 85 to 90% of people do not stretch. So I highly recommend stretching and that's going to help with the soreness, especially if you're a beginner, because when you're first starting out, or even if you haven't worked out in a while, the first four to six weeks are critical because that's when most people quit because they start feeling, oh, I'm so sore. I just can't do it. You, you have to continue and get past that, get over that threshold and it gets better. So if you stretch, that would help relieve a lot of the, the pain that you're feeling. And so what I would do is just find a good stretching course that you can look at and figure out how to stretch or reach out to one of us and we, we can give you recommendations. But you have your own. Yeah. program okay <laughs> so if there are any listeners out there that are thinking okay yeah i don't want to wait till january to do my new year's resolutions and i and i know i really would like to have a healthier lifestyle no i don't want to be on these tablets for the rest of my life i can turn this around what should listeners do next oh take action take action reach out if you need help i'm available as well reach out to me. So where do they need to go to find info about your online coaching program? So you can reach me on KBS Fitness, on Instagram, KBS Fitness One, and just shoot me out a message and I'll reply back and get you guys squared away. Awesome. Fantastic. Now, I know you've used a podcast in the past. For me, this is the most fun way to drive business. And, and I don't think there's that many people that I know that are still in the fitness industry. I just, they're not using it as a resource to drive people to what they do. Can you share any sort of big wins that you've had? I know you've uh, appeared on the pet podcast in the past. One, one thing that I've, why I've gotten into this industry too, is I just want to help people. And I love doing podcasts because it, puts me out more so that way people know who I am and I'm able to actually get out there and be able to help people and because yeah, at the end of the day that's what it's about it's about helping people unfortunately a lot of people are in it just for the money but I want to be able to change the world I want to be able to have healthier lifestyles for people and have them be able to be around for their families longer and enjoy uh, life and they can. you've been doing it for 30 plus years come on that's 
you've been in it for the long term. Maybe I would have carried on if I got some sunshine. See, if I was where There's you are. Sunshine. No probably, sunshine today. <laughs> I would oh, is there no sunshine today? <laughs> It's actually cold here. I think we've gone from just summer to winter. Just it's just gone yeah. straight. We, we bypassed autumn. I think it's just not really kind of <laughs> But yeah, I would have said years ago. Anybody who goes into this industry, to your industry, they do it because they love it and they want to help. Because it because it's not driven by finance. Oh, you know, absolutely. For a long time, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And even teaching groups, it was like, no, there's more money in personal training and you won't wear yourself. But yeah, but no, I want to do this. <laughs> yes. You've got to go with what you're passionate about and the money Absolutely. will come. That is Absolutely. what I say. That is what I say. No, absolutely. So what are your New Year's resolutions going to be then when you get there? What are you going to do for 2024? Ooh. So... I made a promise to myself that I was going to get out my comfort zone and do something a little bit different. So I'm going to be the big five O. So I said, I'm either going to do another show, but take it to either a higher level, like NPC level, or either a triathlon. I just have to get confident with my swimming again, especially the cold water at six in the morning. Yeah, but brings That's back something to drive you. So something so that you have got to be disciplined. Because uh, run us through if you if you're going to be going into competition. Yeah, something that I never do. Don't plan on. But for somebody out there, if they were, how much do they have to prepare for it? How long does it take to get yourself up? to that kind of level and what sort of areas are you focusing on? Because it's not just the weights, is it? It's going to be on the no. nutrition. But what would be your process? So if someone wants to complete a, or compete in a triathlon, then we have to narrow it down to specifics. So if they're trying to do a triathlon, then we have to have specific days where we're going to focus on the swimming, specific days on the running, specific days on cycling. And still incorporate weight training, but it's going to be more, obviously, more endurance than specifically weight training. So it's going to be probably less weight training, but more endurance training, if it's something like that. Now, if they're trying to do a figure or a competition, bodybuilding competition, then that's a whole different, then that's where we're going to eliminate cardio and then focus more on the strength and weight training. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I suppose. Even just getting a six pack abs are made in the kitchen, aren't they? Yes, definitely. And nutrition is key too. And being, and you have to be consistent with nutrition as well. Um, even if like you're a smaller guy, I'm going to say just a person in general, you can be smaller or bigger. And if you're not used to eating, you're going to have to be able to train yourself to where you need to eat. Because even with that, if we're a little bit overweight, we think that. Okay, I'm just going to eat once a day, and that's the key. And it's no, you still need to eat. It's mm. just eating the right foods. The right foods, yeah, because you need your fuel to get through the, the training. Yes. Look, Kinji, it's been um, lovely having you on the show. Thank so, you. So just a quick reminder of how they get in touch with you. Yeah, so Instagram, KBS Fitness 1. You'll see the beautiful awesome. red logo. So you want to make sure what you add up? the 1. Don't wait till January. Get started now. Get ahead of the game. Get ahead yes. of the game. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, any coaches out there that, you know, if you want to come on, podcasting is a great way to grow your audience, get your message out there to the people who need it. So get in touch. If you want to start a podcast, just go to the link at the bottom of the screen, karenrobertscoaching.com forward slash podcast hyphen profit i wanted to also offer if whoever reaches out to me i wanted to give them a 30-day ab workout so that way just to get them a jump start on going into the new year so get in touch on insta get that free resource because that is that's what everybody wants they want a flat stomach so get <laughs> in touch. 
Awesome. Thanks for watching or listening, and I will be back next week. Bye for Thanks, now. Thanks, Sarah. The Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.